Hey, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Lewis, and behind me is my 11th Gen Civic SI. And today we are gonna be talking about PRL's brand new cold air inlet duct. And this is gonna be an add-on to the high volume intake. Uh, as some of you already know, I already had that installed in my car. I'll be sure to link the video either up above here in a flag or down below in, in the description box. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. And yeah, there's already a provision on the high volume intake to install this and it should be pretty easy. You are gonna need, I wouldn't consider it a special tool, but most of you probably don't have it in your toolbox if you don't do um, any kind of weird work, but you're gonna need a three inch hole saw and either an impact wrench or a drill to be able to drill in the new hole to put this in there. And that's really the only special tool that I think you would need. Now, other than that, it's just gonna be a seven millimeter, a 10 millimeter, a Phillips head screwdriver, and that three inch hole saw, and a you know pair of safety glasses for whenever you're making that hole. You don't want any plastic or any metal shavings in case something breaks off your hole saw. Um, it's just a safety precaution that you should take. So yeah, um, if I use any other tools that I haven't mentioned already, I'll be sure to let you know throughout the video. And yeah, it should be pretty cool. I mean, you, I don't know how much this will do, but we'll find out. Uh, I can't really do much tests for you guys. The weather here in Texas has been terrible. It's been in the 30s, 40s. It's been raining, it's the, we've had freezing rain, so you probably won't get to see much of any benefit out of this if it's already cold where you're at. And for those of you that don't know, I figured I might as well say this since we're talking about intakes. Um, for the most part, stock cold air intake, stock intakes are already um, pretty much cold air from the factory. Um, and I'm talking about specifically these new 1.5 Ts, the 11th gens and same thing with the Type R. They take in cold air from the front grill through this duct. And so in a way it's already cold air. Now, PRL's high volume inlet duct does make this duct even bigger so you can suck in more air. It just lets more air circulate through so that way it's not always so hot. Because as you know, it gets pretty hot in the engine bay. So the these in, intake boxes can only keep away so much hot air until like the hair, the air inside of it gets hot. So um, I do think that this will do a better job than factory. And I think that by adding this, it'll do an even better job at keeping the air inside of the, the air box even cooler for you to have better performance, especially in the summertime when you guys are going out to the track or doing some crazy driving. I think it's gonna do you guys wonders and sucking in that much cold air. Now, traditionally, cold air intakes are located on the bottom of the engine bay, and that's for good reason, for, because, um, as a lot of you know, hot air rises, so all the hot air in your engine bay is gonna be up above, not down below, so hence cold air intake, it's gonna be down, it's gonna be sucking in air from below. Now, to address the question that I already know it's coming. No, this is not going to make you hydro lock your car unless for whatever reason you are planning on driving through some lake size puddles. And I think personally, if you're doing that, you probably have a lot more <laughs> problems to be worried about. Um, anyways, yeah. So don't drive through lakes. Um, I don't think you're going to have a problem with hydro locking. I didn't have a problem with the Cobra cold air intake. I've never really heard anybody have a problem with a cold with uh, their cobra cold air intake driving in the rain again you're only going to hydro lock if you're driving through ridiculously sized puddles and you're submerging half your engine bay in the water so i know that question's coming no it's, it's not something you should worry about just be careful where you drive with or without this <laughs> in your car okay um and yeah uh should produce a little bit more no <coughs> Should produce a little bit more noise. Uh, I know a lot of you guys buy intakes for the turbo noise. Um, this high volume intake by itself is not as loud as the Cobra that I had. The Cobra cooler intake was significantly louder. And 
This is not as loud because it's kind of enclosed. The, uh, the filter is kind of enclosed in the box. So hopefully we'll be able to hear a little bit more noise thanks to this duct because I know for a fact a lot of you guys only buy intakes for the turbo noise regardless of performance. And don't try and hide it. I know some of y'all are out there. Anyways, <laughs> let's go ahead and get started. It should be fairly easy. Now, if you watch PRL's video, you'll see that they did it through their wheel well. I'm gonna remove the front bumper because I think that it's gonna show you guys, illustrate a little bit better as to what is going on on that side of the car. And I personally think that taking the front bumper off is super easy. I know it can be kind of annoying for some of you, but yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. And yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Also, if you're new here, thank you. If you like this video, smash that like button. Consider subscribing if you wanna see more videos like this. And yeah, thanks for coming. And for those of you that have been coming for every video, thank you for the support. Thank you for always smashing the like button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it down in the comment section below. I think I do a pretty good job of answering all your questions. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so just so you have kind of an idea of what we're, what we're gonna be doing here in the engine bay, I'm gonna be removing this inlet hose. It's held on by these two clamps. Those are gonna be the seven millimeter that we're gonna be using. We're gonna need a Phillips to remove this mass airflow sensor. And don't forget to, well, you can either set it aside or unclip it. I'm gonna unclip it and remove it totally. I don't want it to get damaged. Um, it's probably not gonna be a good time. And then over here, we're gonna remove these two 10 millimeter bolts. And then I'm gonna move, remove the plastic rivets. Uh, chances are, if you already have this on your car, you already know how to remove it. And then we have one 10 millimeter down here. As you can see right there, we need to remove that. And then this should pop out and we can in make that hole that the new duct is gonna go in. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Also, my intake is pre-production, so I have this pre-production bracket here. I don't know if you'll have to remove the duct in order to remove this bracket. Um, yours might be set up differently, but I have to remove the duct so I can remove these bolts, that way I can remove the intake. Uh, just something to keep in mind. I feel like yours might be a little bit different since you'll be production, but you never know. So, yeah. <clears throat> All right. So, this is the part where we're going to uh, make a hole right here. Now, be careful with your hands. Don't put them anywhere near here. Uh, grab somewhere safe and start slowly. You want to gradually increase the speed. Uh, that way, you know, you don't hurt yourself or anybody around you if you're working with somebody else. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna go ahead and start slow. And also, so that way I can, you guys can see, there's already a hole right there for you to use. So all you have to do is just put your bit right there. Start slowly. All right. So once you got the hole started, just go ahead and make sure you're in the right direction. As you can see, it makes a mess. So be prepared for that. Also, why you would want to wear safety glasses because <laughs> if any of that got in your eye, it probably wouldn't be a good time. All right, mine wasn't completely straight up and down, so I kind of scratched the interior, which is fine. But I got the piece out. And there you go, uh, that's out. There's a mess, I'm gonna have to vacuum it all off and it's really not that hard. All right, on to the next. So to kind of give you an idea beforehand uh, how this is gonna look, you're just gonna put one coupler on the side. You're gonna put one clamp, well, you're gonna wanna put both clamps on first. And then after that, just slide it down and 
that's pretty much it. You're gonna maneuver it whichever way. And then there's gonna be a bracket, this bracket. Uh, it's gonna go right here and it's gonna, uh, well, it's either gonna sandwich in between your resonator if you have it. If you don't have it, then it's not gonna be sandwiched in between the resonator, it's just gonna be by itself. <clears throat> okay, so usually there would be a resonator right here that goes to your stock intercooler piping. I don't have the stock intercooler or intercooler piping. I have an aftermarket one, so it automatically deleted the resonator. So if you were to go right here, you would have noticed a resonator. Well, I'm gonna show you what the duct is gonna look like. Once the duct is installed, It's gonna look like that. Hopefully you can see it. And there it is. That's what it's gonna look like installed. It just slides right in. Okay, so this is the top view of that duct. And as you can see, I installed the bracket right there. Hopefully you can see it. It's gonna use one of the holes. If you can see that 10 millimeter bolt right there, that would be a bolt that would have been used for the resonator. But now all you need is a 10 millimeter bolt to install that bracket down at the bottom half. There's also one up top, don't get it confused. You wanna use the bottom one. And then you're gonna, that's how you're gonna mount the duct. <clears throat> okay, so now to mount, the duct to the bracket, it's gonna be these two three millimeter bolts. I think they're called M5 bolts and a three millimeter Allen key wrench. And yeah, we're gonna secure it down. Uh, PRL does say to leave the bracket that's connected to the car side, leave it a little bit loose and it'll be a little bit easier to maneuver the duct to the actual intake for better installation. So keep that in mind. So I'm gonna go ahead and secure this. Okay, so I just finished installing those Allen key screws. Do be patient, it is gonna take a little bit. Uh, it's kind of annoying reaching down there and doing little quarter turns at a time or half turns at a time, but it's in. So let's go take a look. So there's a duct. Uh, So there's the duct, it's fastened down. And then we can go to this side and we can see that it is gonna be taking in air from this side of the car. Now, putting on the coupler is gonna be a little bit tricky. All right guys, so this is probably gonna be the most difficult part. Um, well, the most trickier part, the Allen keys, the uh, screws, they were a little bit difficult. Uh, it just takes a little while. But this is gonna be the more complicated part and it's installing the intake onto the duct. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. That way you have kind of an idea of where to go when you go to do yours. So, all right, so as you can see, hopefully. Okay, so there's the lower duct and as you can see, I have both clamps on there. The lower one is fully tightened down. The second one is not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the intake on top of it and let it slide in. And you can get a view from the, this side. I know it's kind of terrible, but um, yeah, you can take a view from the side right here. There's enough space for you. And then you're gonna tighten going this way. So. Yeah, uh, I'll let you know how it goes. Okay, okay, so I have the intake inserted through that coupler. Um, and what I meant by going through this side is, here's the intake and all you have to do is stick your hand down and make your way to that coupler and then maneuver that clamp to where it goes, it slides up. And you're gonna wanna make sure that before you do that, there's some tension on the clamp and then make sure that the seven millimeter clamp, the 
the actual head of the clamp is pointed this direction so we can put a, a socket to it and tighten it down. Okay, so I got an extension and a socket and I'm going from the side, I got it on the clamp and I'm just hand tightening it down. It doesn't need to be super tight because again, this is like a, uh, a plastic with a, you know, a rubber coupler. So it doesn't need to be crazy tight. You might crack it. And I think it's in. All right, so it's in there. It's finally in there, so now all we have to left to do is just put the coupler on here, put the MAF sensor on, put the, the ducting part back on here, and then we can start it up and see if we hear any differences. All right, so that pretty much sums up the entire install. It's not entirely too difficult. The hardest part is just kind of getting everything lined up so that way it sits right into place. But I'll go ahead and drop some audio of what it sounds like just by revving it right now. Okay, so I, hopefully you enjoyed that. It's definitely a little bit louder. You can hear it coming from that duct a lot more. Now all that's really left to do is just go out for a drive and see if we can hear it inside the cabin a lot more than without that duct. So yeah, let's go ahead and go for a drive. It sounds with the duct, with the windows closed. I'm not in sport mode, so there's no any kind of artificial noise. It is louder than the high volume intake by itself. guys so that pretty much sums up this video if you enjoyed it please consider subscribing if you're not already smash that like button and if you have any questions be sure to leave it down in the comment section below so i can answer it and or maybe somebody else who sees it can answer it for me um but yeah again the duct is sold separately from the high volume intake it's an add-on not a part of the actual kit itself uh, they did that so that way you know they can minimize costs as much as possible. And if those of, us, those of us that want it can just add it on separately and those of us that don't want it don't have to be forced to get it. So I thought that was pretty cool. So if you do a lot of track driving, I highly encourage you to get it. If you do, if you live in somewhere that's really hot and you like pushing the limits on your car, I encourage you to get it. It should decrease in the air temps significantly. And yeah, I'm sorry I couldn't do more testing for you guys, but as I mentioned before, the weather here has been all over the place. Texas can be a little weird in between the seasons. So again, thank you for watching. Thank you for always coming back. And everything that I use in the video is going to be linked down in the description box below for you to take a look at in case you want to support me. A lot of them are affiliate links. Again, they don't always give you a discount, but they do help out the channel. So thanks if you're one of those that uses those links. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Whoa, before you go, you should highly consider checking out my previous video on the PRL Flex Fuel Kit with Wi-Fi capability, so you can look at it straight from your phone. You don't have to worry about Honda or K-Tuner to be able to look at those things. So yeah, I highly encourage you to look at it if you're interested and consider subscribing. I'll catch you guys later.